What's up guys, it's Ice with Top Ice Gaming and I'm just here to quickly introduce you guys to my video here. This is going to be a very long video. This is a gold guide for every single skill and at the very end I'm including a few miscellaneous uh, gold making methods that didn't really fit into any skills. So uh, sit back, enjoy the video and I will pop in some annotations here at the beginning to quickly guide you to the skill that you're looking for. Enjoy guys. Alright guys, right here's the table of contents. Just click on whichever skill you want to be taken to and it will take you directly to the portion of the video where that skill starts. Hopefully these will all be working properly. If not, please let me know in the, in the comments below. Alright guys, the first skill that appears in our skill book after the combat stats that we are going to do a quick gold guide on is rune crafting. There are several different ways to make money with rune crafting and nearly any type of training is a formidable way to make money with rune crafting. Starting at level 1, the only runes you'll be able to make are mind and air runes. The only way to make profit while rune crafting at this level is to mine your own rune essence. To mine rune essence, you must have completed the rune mysteries quest. It's a quest that requires no combat and is very simple to complete. And once you finish it, you will be allowed to go into the rune essence mine by teleporting from this rune salesman guy down here. He'll teleport you where you need to go and you can mine your own rune essence and pure essence. I'll just quickly show you the guy that teleports you there. Although I'm sure most people already know. You can do really quick runs using the Verak East Bank. Uh, right here is the building, the fire rune symbol on the mini-map will show you. You'll come in here, you will find Aubrey, and you'll right click and click teleport. Cast a little spell on you, and then here you are. Right here next to Rune Essence. I'll just drop one so I can show you guys. It mines really quickly. Done. Then when you're done, you go to the side here, the corners, and find a portal. And then you take a portal out, and it'll t take you back to wherever you teleported in from. And then we're back. Uh, to do this efficiently, what you'll want to do is equip your pickaxe and go in there with any weight reducing gear so that you can get more run. You might not even really need that. Then you'll just run straight north to the Verrock East Bank, come in, bank your stuff, and then call it good. Uh, I'll take another rune essence. Then you'll do all that. You'll bank until you have as much rune essence as you can possibly force yourself to mine. Then you'll come over here. This is assuming you're level 1. The runes that you'll want to make are air runes. I prefer to make air runes uh, all the way up until you can make uh, nature runes. Just because the profit is much quicker with air runes than it is with any other rune until you get up to nature's simply because of how quick the runs are. So we'll start here from Verrock West Bank. Verrock West Bank, you're going to run straight west. Follow this little path. Pass this um, house right here with the two quests and the stove. And then you'll come right here. Off to the side into this little forest area. And it's even marked on the mini-map with a rune crafting symbol. And you'll just simply click on Enter Mysterious Ruin. Then click on Craft Rune Altar at this altar. And ta-da. You have crafted all of your essence into air runes. So alternatively at higher levels, uh, starting at the minimum room crafting I would do this at is 33. So starting at 33 room crafting, you can actually make profit by buying your own rune essence and then coming in and making it into air runes. I'll show you that real quick. So at 33, you will make a minimum of four air runes per rune essence, and I also believe that you can get extras. You can also get extras and get five or six per rune essence if you're lucky. 
So we'll just grab a rune essence real quick. And we will deposit these air runes. We will grab one, two, three, four. And I'll quickly show you. Currently, one rune essence is 54 gold. And if you turn that into four air runes, 56 gold. Not much of a profit, but it'll be more the higher rune crafting you get, you'll start getting more and more air runes. So, at 33, you'll probably get pretty much four for each one. So you'll be making two gold per um, per essence. And if you wear a tiara, that's going to be 28, which will be 56 gold per inventory. And it's quick runs. And then, once you get to the higher levels, you'll be able to get five or six. I think currently I get six air runes per rune essence minimum. So that will, at my level, which is only level 47, 46 rune crafting, uh, I can make about 300k per hour doing this method. Uh, not the best method, but it is still quite a good chunk of profit. Uh, then at the higher rune crafting level, starting at 44, I suggest uh, making nature runes in the um, abyss area. The runs take quite a bit longer, but you can get through there pretty quickly if you bring a beast of burden to bring a little bit of extra essence and... Uh, rings of dueling to teleport you to castle wars and bank uh, at level 77 you're of course going to want to switch and do blood runes and that'll make you the most profit that you can get from rune crafting <laughs>
sorry that that's the only way I can find to make money, but construction is not really a money-making skill. It's not made for such. But I'm sure there's plenty of uh, other ways you guys can find to make the time go by. Alright guys, the next skill after combat skills that comes in our skill book is Dungeoneering. Dungeoneering is definitely not a money-making skill, but there are quite a few different things that you can do to not necessarily directly make profit with Dungeoneering, but to help increase the amount of profit that you can get from your other skills. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is some of the rewards that you can get. Some of the rewards that can help you as you're training your other skills or making money with your other skills are of course the weapons, obviously, but that requires quite a few tokens. Uh, the weapons can easily help you get kills quite a bit faster, assuming you don't have the best weapons. But this one right here is a particularly good one, the herbicide. Uh, instead of receiving certain types of herbs from monster drops, you may choose for this item to corrode and destroy them. This provides you with two times the herb lore experience that you would have gained for cleaning the item. So this uh, definitely doesn't make money directly, but this will help you get your herb lore level up so that you can use some of the methods I'm going to show you later on in the herb lore section. And in that section, I will surely backtrack and let you guys know, grab this herbicide if you're leveling up your herb lore. Uh, another thing right here is the gem bag. The gem bag is something that you just set in your inventory, and as you mine, any gems that you can that you mine will be put into this gem bag. Uh, it, it'll hold a maximum of 100 gems, so it's really great to just have this in there. You can continue to mine ores really quickly and deposit them and not have to worry about mining the gems. You can put, just toss the gems in here, and that's great. Another thing right here is the coal bag. This works pretty well with the gem bag. You just toss it in your inventory as well, and it will hold up to 27 extra pieces of coal. It's really great if you're uh, power mining coal for profit. And I'm going to, in the mining section of this guide, show you a great spot to power mine coal for huge amounts of profit. Um, other than that, there's not really a whole lot of ways that you can make money with Dungeoneering. However, if you hop to World 7, which is the free-to-play Dungeoneering world, or World 30. 34, I believe, which is the members Dungeoneering world, and just come in here, you can spam uh, regular chat saying that you're selling floors. This is assuming you have a certain high Dungeoneering level and uh, have fairly decent binds. This is for people with a, quite a bit higher Dungeoneering already. I've done it myself. I have a certain guy on my friends list here, uh, right here, Babe the Pig. This guy has uh, started out way back in the day and then just came back to the game and has never done engineering. So what he's doing is he's paying me 100k per floor that I carry him through until he gets up to 90 engineering or before that if he can afford his chaotic weapons. It's a good deal for him. He can just sit in the middle of the dungeon and go AFK while I solo mediums for him. I stop every third floor that we comp that we complete and he pays me the 300k then we continue. That's just to assure that I don't get ripped off and do you know, 10 floors and then him bail and I, I you know, miss out on a mill. Uh, so far I've got him up to 50 something, 52 Dungeoneering I believe. I of course didn't charge him the 100k for the first floors that I did until I got him to uh, 25 Dungeoneering. Then that's when I started charging him the actual 100k. Um, and it's a good deal for both of us. He just gets to go AFK and I get to make some money and I also get a little bit of Dungeoneering experience myself from it. A uh, quick little Dungeoneering leveling tip. One thing I want to show you guys is right here. This is the prestige experience guide. What you want to do is complete each floor once. You'll get a check next to the floor as you complete it. Once you complete each floor once, your progress will say the maximum level of floors that you've completed. So for me, once it says 35, or well, current progress, once it says 35, I'm going to just click reset. And then it will reset it to zero, and then I will get bonus prestige experience in each floor that I do next time. And then you could just continue to do that as you finish the last floor, you reset, and then you do it again. And then you finish the last floor, reset, do it again. And that's pretty much the best way to level up your Dungeoneering. Just wanted to let you guys in on that really quickly because I know a lot of people don't really understand what that means. So it's really simple, uh, nothing to it. That's all you guys got to do and best of luck to you with the Dungeoneering Money Making. A quick addition to the Dungeoneering Money Making guide that I forgot to mention when I recorded the first part of that video is another thing that you get are rewards which are hidden 
areas, like hidden uh, dungeons in the real game that you can access. Uh, there's quite a few good ones. The ones I am really happy with are the Dwarven Mine Hidden Mine, which is a great place to get away from, or sorry, the Mining Guild Hidden Mine is the better one. It's a great place to get away from so many bots in the Mining Guild and get a little bit of mining yourself in there. Uh, the Taverly Hellhound Dungeon. The Hellhound's not the absolute best thing to uh, farm money on with combat, but it's also pretty great for Slayer, and they are decent money. Uh, Taverly Blue Dragon Dungeons. Blue Dragons are great money. We'll get into that in the combat spot. And uh, there's one more. Uh, the Black Demon Dungeon. Black Demons are kind of looked over uh, and not really taken into consideration, but you can make a little bit of money with them, and then, of course, for Slayer, it helps as well. And that'll do it for that extra tidbit. Once again, great luck to you guys with Dungeoneering and making money with the skill. Alright guys, the next up in the order of skills in our skill book is Agility. There's not any direct way to make money with Agility, like you can't just level your Agility and then go use it to make money. However, uh, the, sh the uh, multiples. These help you when farming with thieving. They give you chances to get double, triple, quadruple, and even uh, five times loot from different mobs that you're going to pickpocket. Uh, it goes with thieving, so you have to level up your thieving as well as the agility to get the bon or the uh, benefits from this. And that's pretty much the only way you can make money with agility. Other than it, then some shortcuts can help you get to and from banks a lot quicker, so that you can maximize the amount of runs that you can get in an hour. Uh, that can also help. Agility is a great uh, backup skill to help you win, win uh, farming gold, but there's no direct way to use agility to get money. And that's pretty much it for agility. Uh, it's not super important to get your agility 99 ASAP. Just get it to whatever level you need to access places that you want to go to or to uh, get uh, potential quadruple loots from the mobs that you're going to be pickpocketing. That's about it for agility. Uh, best of luck to you guys. Alright guys, the next skill that comes in their skill book is herbalism. Herbalism is probably the easiest skill to make gold with currently. Just because of the way that bots are set up right now farming all different kinds of items like this. Um, so quickly what I want to show you guys is that you can make money doing almost anything related to herbalism. So here's what it is. This is a grimy toad flax, which is the dirty herb. Currently they cost 3.2k on the Grand Exchange, and currently they are selling at market price, so they're selling for 3 point, or buying for 3.2k. A clean toad flax is 3.3k, so you can make a t almost 200 gold profit just by cleaning one. And if you can clean 28 in an inventory, just think about that. That's 560 gold, or 5.6k gold that you can make per inventory, and it takes uh, 14 seconds per inventory. So that's pretty damn good profit if you think about it. So if you take, we'll just round it up to 15 seconds per inventory so that it's a little bit easier to do the math work here. So if, if it takes 15 seconds to do an inventory, and you can clean 28 in an inventory, then what you're getting is 15 seconds to clean an inventory and you are cleaning 20 in an inventory so you can clean 112 herbs per minute and if you're making a 200 gold profit each herb that you do then you're making 22.4k profit in a minute. And then uh, multiply that by an hour, that's 1.34 million gold that you can make per hour. The prices on this, however, will fluctuate quite a bit just because the market is so unstable at the moment. But just by cleaning those herbs, you can make 1.3 mil in an hour just cleaning those and then reselling them. And they're super easy to clean. You just grab an inventory full of them, uh, click it, 
and it will just clean it for you. If you have more than one, it'll bring up a little box and you just click clean and it'll clean all of them in a row for you. So I also have another uh, herb here. I have some Renar to show you. Grimy Renar is 2.33k and clean Renar is 2.39k. Not as much of a profit gap, which is why I wanted to show you guys with the toad flax. Alright guys, another step that you can take in making uh, money with herbalism is by taking herbs that are the low levels. You really need to be careful and check what you do on these before you do it. And taking a vial of water. And of course to save money you can buy plain vials and fill them with water yourself or you can buy vials of water from the herbalism uh, supplies person in Ardone I believe. In Ardone they have like I think you can buy 10k of them at once or something like that. Uh, but by cleaning the grimy gum that would already make you a profit but by taking it a step further and adding it to the vial of water Let's price check that. It's now worth 348 gold, as opposed to the 225 gold it costs for the GOM, plus the 21 gold for the vial. So that is a profit of approximately somewhere around 70 gold per. It's still going to be slower than just cleaning the toad flax, though, so I'd suggest sticking with clean toad flax. Uh, however, that is an alternative method that you can use to make money with herb lore. And like I said at the beginning, there's not a lot that you can do that won't end up making you money with herb lore. Uh, certain potions will also make you money with herb lore, but you need to be careful because most potions won't if you buy the ingredients. However, if you farm the ingredients, then the profit is 100%, and any profit is considered keeping you in the black. Um, just real quick, if there's potions that you want to make to make the most profit, I would suggest staying with prayer potions because everybody is constantly wanting prayer potions so uh, make your prayer potions and that should be the highest amount of profit that you can make um, I'm trying to find prayer potions on here but I can't seem to find just a plain prayer potion hmm it's fine you guys know what I'm talking about and we will just quickly, I'll try to show you on here. Prayer Potion. You make a three. So they're worth 1.7k. And I'm sure that you could probably get some of the ingredients for pretty cheap and then farm the more expensive ingredients and it would reduce the amount of time it would take you to make them. Alright guys, the next skill in this lineup of skills in our skill book is thieving. There's a, quite a few ways to make money with thieving, believe it or not. And the simplest one that I can show you is by pickpocketing master farmers. Master farmers is a very variable amount of profit per hour. And it also depends on, uh, it depends not only on luck of what you pick out of their pocket, but it also depends on the luck of how often they catch you picking their pocket. I'll go ahead and quickly show you guys. My thieving level is currently level 63. Nothing impressive, but it's still fairly good. Uh, I think it requires 44 thieving to pick these guys' pockets, and they're one-click pickpocket. That's the only action they have. So you just left-click on them, pick their pockets. They give you seeds every time you pick their pockets. And as you can see, I'm going to pick his pocket a good chunk of times before he actually catches me. Um, now, depending on the kind of seeds you can get, your profit could be pretty good or pretty bad. There are certain seeds that are worth a decent amount currently, and then there are other seeds that are worth uh, you know, dirt prices. Sweet corn seeds are worth three, four. Uh, corn seeds are worth... 240, those can be a nice profit. One, nine, as you can see, most of them aren't worth a whole lot, but just knowing that I just spent maybe f five seconds left clicking that guy and made 701 gold, that's pretty good. Uh, you can bring food. I would suggest wearing armor to give you more life. Um, I mean, I've honestly don't really think you need that much food. Maybe just bring like three or four 
rock tails or something and it will do you fine uh, because your inventory is going to fill up pretty quickly and even after your inventory fills up you can still pickpocket him because it will still give you duplicates of the seeds that you've already got however uh, you do want to do bank runs once in a while and that's why I suggest not bringing a whole lot of food because it's kind of pointless uh, because you're going to be doing bank runs anyway so uh, when you go to the bank the bankers heal you now of course as most people know just standing near a banker will heal you a good chunk and that's uh, that's the main way that I find getting profit with thieving Alright guys, the next skill in a row on our skill book is crafting. There's still a couple of ways to make money with crafting, however, thanks to bots, as with pretty much every other skill uh, in RuneScape, the profit has been greatly reduced. However, a lot of people complain about the bots ruining the amount of profit you can make. You can The only thing I can say about that is the price of a lot of things has gone down along with the profit, so it's a give and take, I suppose. So, the first method in crafting is going to be making urns, fishing urns particularly. I'm going to quickly listen to this musician while I explain how you start off. You want to start off from the Verrock West Bank, and then you're just going to travel straight west with your soft clay. Make sure it's soft clay and not regular clay, as regular clay cannot be molded in a pottery oven until water has been added to it. You can also make a good amount of money by adding water to regular clay and then reselling it. However, that is not required that does not have a required crafting level, so that is going to be shown at the very end in the miscellaneous gold-making methods. So you're just going to continue straight east and head into the Barbarian Village, and the first building right here is a pottery-type building. There's a potter's wheel and a pottery oven. You're going to go to the pottery oven and select fishing urns. Hmm, what am I looking for? Oh, I'm sorry, you have to go to the potter's wheel first and make yourself an urn. You'll make the best one that you can, and you make yourself unfinished urns, and then come over to the pottery oven and turn them into finished urns. The price of one soft clay as of current, right now, me just buying them, is... 121 gold and the price of a strong fishing urn currently is 607 gold so using the time that I did from the runs earlier you can complete a an entire run in one minute and 30 seconds give or take and if you can create 28 urns in one minute and 30 seconds, then that means that, if you'll give me just a second to do the math, you can make around 480 gold profit, and you can do 28 urns in an inventory, so you can make 13.5k profit per inventory, and it takes you a minute and a half to do one, meaning that in an hour you can make about 538k profit from making strong fishing urns. Uh, if you want to make the absolute most profit, you want to have the highest crafting level possible and be able to make the strongest urns possible. However, also, I did not check the price on any urns. I'm sure that other urns were more expensive than fishing urns. I just went ahead and made the fishing urns because, psh, I don't know, I'll probably use them. Um, so you can probably make more than that, probably around 650k if you look and pay attention and figure out which urns are selling for the most. And the next part of this crafting guide is going to take us to um, Falador. So we're going to go to Falador, and I will show you guys another quick method of making profit using the crafting skill. So when you hop off the lodestone, you're going to just run straight south and you're going to end up right about here okay right over here is a bank hmm. seems a little bit farther than I remember but it's not 
So right here. So starting from this bank, you're going to withdraw gold bars. The great thing about gold bars is they're fairly cheap. Currently they are 112 gold on the Grand Exchange. They are so cheap because so many people power level smelting using nothing but gold bars. Then you're just going to run over here to this uh, furnace. Use the gold bar on the furnace and make it into a gold ring. Gold rings right now are the highest amount of profit that you can make. However, you can uh, browse the Grand Exchange to figure out which um, gold item can make you the most profit. Currently, gold rings make you 38 gold per. They take 1.5 seconds to smelt. And the travel time from the bank to the um, furnace takes approximately 15 seconds. Meaning that in a minute you can make four runs. Four inventories is going to equal 112 rings. Each ring making 38 gold profit. That's 4,256 gold in a minute. And in an hour, that is 256k profit. Not as much profit as you saw with the urns, however, this is a more laid-back way, I would have to say. The runs are quite a bit shorter, and uh, you can also take this a step further and add in, you know, cut emeralds, cut sapphires. I would prefer cut emeralds, cut emeralds make the most profit. You can toss in a... Uh, let me find emerald ring... This only requires level 27 crafting, which is nothing, and a cut emerald is also really cheap. The great thing about it is, is you can make these emerald rings and sell them for massive amounts of profit, because people want to make them into rings of dueling. On the other side, you can buy cosmic runes yourself and enchant the rings into rings of dueling and make even more profit. However, it does require another step and take more time. You would be better off sticking with the crafting urns. That's about it I've got for crafting, guys. Uh, quite a few good ways to make money with crafting currently. You can also make money with battle staves, but I'm not going to get into that because battle staves really annoy me, and the prices on them are fluctuating so much right now after the evolution of combat that I'm too afraid to put any real money into them. All right, guys, that's it for crafting. I will see you back with the next part, which is going to be fetching. What's up, guys? The next skill that comes up in our skill book in the uh, regular, you know, top to bottom, left to right sequence is fletching. Uh, fletching is probably one of the simplest skills to make gold with in the game currently, uh, just because of the offhand crossbows. Offhand crossbows are a really great way to make a little bit of profit. Uh, currently, there's not a whole lot of offhand crossbows in the game, but you do not want to make offhand crossbows of anything less than adamant. So if you cannot make adamant crossbows, then your profit's not going to be as good or no profit at all. Quickly, I was just going to show you guys. However, I can't seem to get a crossbow string to sell. I'll go over that in the miscellaneous. I'll show you guys how to make your own strings for a ton of profit. But you're just going to make a sea bow using limbs of at least adamant and a stock of whatever you need. Um, you can see in the fletching guide what you need stock-wise to combine it to make a crossbow. So to make an adamant, you need a mahogany stock. Unfortunately, mahogany is going to be the most expensive ones for you guys, so you may want to completely skip that and go to runite and make runite offhand bows. Crossbows, excuse me. Um, however, though, there are a few other ways that you can make profit using fletching. And I'll be back in another part of a video to show you guys those. Alright guys, a quick way to make money with the fletching skill is by stringing maple shield bows. Quick and simple, you want to withdraw 14 maple shield bows U and 14 bow strings. Use the bow on the bow strings and string yourself some maple shield bows. The cost of one string and one maple shield bow U is... 225 gold, however, I did get 26 gold back while purchasing them, so 199 gold, and they sell for 270 G. So that's an 80 gold profit. They take half, or excuse me, they take 
about 20 oh no they're half seconds so they take about 14 seconds to do an inventory you can do 28 uh, no you can't you can do 14 bows in an inventory and you make 70 one gold profit per bow that's 994 gold per inventory it takes 14 seconds to do an inventory we'll round it to 15 meaning that in a minute you can make 4k and that in one hour you can make 239k by stringing maple bows on top of that not only do you get a nice chunk of profit, but you also get decent fletching experience, which is great when leveling fletching. To increase the amount of profit that you can get from this method, uh, create your own bowstrings. To learn how to create your own bowstrings, if you do not know, or to learn how to do it the most efficient way, uh, please skip down towards the end of the video and check it out in the miscellaneous section. I'm going to show you guys that as a miscellaneous guide on how to make some cash. Not a whole lot of other ways to make money with fletching, however, I'm sure most people already know about this way. By buying arrow shafts. Ah, uh, arrow has a W. So by buying arrow shaft... It actually would be even cheaper to buy logs, but we'll just buy the arrow shafts to get it done quickly. Uh, by buying arrow shafts and attaching, I'm going to use feathers from my bank because I have so many feathers that I don't know what to do with. And attaching feathers to them, you can make a legitimate amount of profit. So hold on. One arrow shaft and one feather cost 31 gold. So... 31 gold, we can attach the arrows and make headless arrows, and then a headless arrow sells for 50 gold. So that's 29 gold per, eh, per arrow, and you can make 15 arrow shafts in a second. So, if you'll give me just a second, 21 gold, and you can make 15 in a second. That means 315 gold on average per second meaning you can make about 19k in a minute and 1.13 mil in an hour. This is a little bit tedious, however, and can get boring fairly quickly. Also, the fledging experience that you get from it is not that impressive. However, the money and profit that you can make from it is well worth it. To increase the amount of profit that you can get using this method, obviously, uh, chop your own logs or buy logs and make them into arrow shafts. Both will save you a little bit of money. And kill chickens to gather your own feathers. If neither of those are something you want to do, obviously buying the feathers and buying arrow shafts still make a decent amount of profit at 1.13 mil per hour. However, you can double triple that by gathering your own materials so I would definitely suggest doing so uh, it could definitely make you quite a bit more profit in the long run um, not a lot of other ways to make money with fletching uh, fletching has more or less died uh, in the past few weeks uh, because a lot of people started using it to make money after the EOC uh, however, the methods I showed you guys are pretty good. It's uh, on par with a lot of the other skills in money making and better than most. Um, that's all I got for fletching, guys. And I will see you in a few minutes with the next skill. Alright, guys. The next skill on our list of skills is Hunter. Uh, unfortunately, the profit from Hunter is minimal and almost none in most cases. Uh, however, there there are simple ways that you can still make a uh, fairly decent profit with Hunter. What you want to do is teleport to the mobilizing armies using your Ring of Dueling and run just a little bit north and a good bit east. Uh, right over here you'll find the Red Chinchampas. And as usual, I mean I'm sure everybody already knows, you lay out your box traps, catch your Red Chinchampas. Uh, it requires a fairly high level of Hunter, however, and... I wouldn't even recommend doing it until at least level 80 when you can lay out uh, four traps at once. 
using four traps at once, you can make, according to a friend of mine, I obviously don't have a high enough hunter to do it myself, so I had him do it for me. Uh, you can make around just about 600k gold per hour doing hunter with red chinchampas. Um, I'm sure a lot of people remember back before uh, the bots sort of killed everything. You can make one hell of a lot more than that, but, uh, you know, still 500 to 600k per hour is nothing to complain about. Simple money, uh, hunter experience along with it, and if you don't want the money, you can obviously use them chinchampas to uh, farm things with combat, I guess, although that's not a very good idea <laughs> anymore either because there's so many weapons that are stronger than chins. But, uh, Red Chinchampa's 500-600k, not really a whole lot of anything else is going to make you any substantial amount of profit, and by any substantial amount I mean anything over 100k per hour. Uh, there's just not very many ways to make money with Hunter anymore, unfortunately, but that's the way it is, guys. Um, Red Chinchampa's, stick with them. You can also do Salamanders in the swamps of Lumbridge, and I think there's also some Salamanders out here somewhere that can make you a little bit of profit, uh, nothing special, however, uh, you can make around 200k profit from those, if you want to, if you have high enough summoning, you can use the Spirit Lerupias to teleport quickly to the banks, uh, if not, I'm sorry, but that's not going to make you very much profit either, uh, yeah, as a lot of you guys probably remember, the, uh, Red chins used to make over two mil per hour, just picking those bad boys up with your box traps. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. But that's what I found so far, and that's the only methods I found to make any substantial amount of money using the hunter skill. As always, best of luck to you guys trying to make money with your hunter skill. Alright guys, the next skill in the skill book in order is mining. Mining is fairly decent money after the evolution of combat, believe it or not. Uh, it's pretty surprising that mining is good money because there's so many bots that do it, but uh, I guess the demand for the supply is keeping up with the amount that the bots can produce, so uh, I'm not going to complain about it, I'm just going to abuse the shit out of it and make as much money as I can. So, of course, you're going to want to pickaxe the best pickaxe you can use or the best pickaxe you can afford at that. Um, for me, that's going to be Rune right now, just because I'm not high enough to use a dragon pick. And even when I can, I don't know if I'm going to buy one, because I personally don't mine a whole lot. Uh, you're going to start off in Falador at the northeast, yes, northeast bank. And you're going to run to the far northeast corner and head into the mine. Uh, this is probably the absolute best place I've found to make any substantial money with mining. Now, first things first. If you are low mining level, then what you're going to want to mine is the iron over here. Iron, not a very substantial amount of profit, but depending on how quickly you can mine it, like I personally can fill up an inventory with iron in about 45 seconds here, uh, 50 seconds on a bad day if there's other people here, so we'll go ahead and with 50 seconds. So I can get 28 ores in 50 seconds, and each ore is worth 115 gold. So I mean, uh, not very impressive right there. However, uh, we will go ahead and say that we get 100, or 28 at 115, so 3.2k in the 50 seconds. And, uh, I'm trying to do the math in my head here. I'm terrible at math. Uh, that's going to be easy. So, that's going to be approximately, uh, 226k gold per hour. That's nothing special. Not very impressive. If your mining is a little bit higher, you can mine the coal. There's plenty of coal down here. You just have to do a little bit of running. There's coal right here, and there's coal in that corner over there as well. Uh, coal, I can fill up an inventory with coal in just about a minute. So one minute fills me up with 28 coal. 
and for some reason this one's going to be stubborn. So one minute fills me up with 28 coal. Coal's worth 207 gold each. Quite a bit better profit. 207 gold each, and in a minute I can get 28 of them. And then that gives me about 350k per hour profit. Still not anything to be excited about. Now, here's where actual uh, I, um, Dungeoneering can come into play. Right here, you can use your Dungeoneering to climb back here into this mysterious entrance. And I also forgot to mention that you can mine these mithril ore rocks if your mining level is high enough, and that will increase your profit per hour. Uh, not by a whole lot, though. So, just because they seem to take too long to mine, even at the higher mining levels, according to my buddy, he has 82 mining, and he says these things still take a little while for him to mine. Uh, but basically, you're going to just climb down this mysterious entrance. And now here's the really great part about this. Deposit box right here. And you can just deposit all of your ores. This makes it so the bank time takes almost absolutely nothing. Not to mention it, but right here is seven, or excuse me, six mithril ore rocks. Then, not even the best part, right here is tons of coal. This will cut down the amount of time it takes you to fill up an inventory with coal because it's all so condensed right here. And then not to mention it, the bank is literally five seconds away with a one-click bank and you can deposit everything. Uh, this is probably the absolute best spot to mine coal and right here I can fill up an inventory with coal in just about 40 seconds and we'll count it as 45 seconds because it takes me five seconds to bank so in 45 seconds I can have 28 coal valued at the same price as earlier and that is just amazing that means that I can get if I'll do the math real quick that leaves me with about 480k profit per hour and that can only go up as you do it because you're going to be getting experience and mining levels and more mining levels means that you mine this shit faster which means that the runs are going to become quicker that's pretty much the best way to make money with mining uh, you can use alternative methods such as using the mine south or to the uh, south west of Varrock. they're both like pretty much right below the banks in Varrock. and uh, mining other things such as um, tin and copper, but those will not even make you 200k per hour. And on top of that, it takes so much longer to get inventories. Uh, one more thing that you can do is mine clay uh, south of the Varrock West Mine. Or <laughs> the south of the Varrock West Bank. There's a spot right there with two clay rocks, and they respawn ridiculously fast, and clay is actually fairly decent profit per hour, making you about 250 gold per hour. That can be exponentially increased if you add water to the clay, creating soft clay, and even more increased if you then use your soft clay in, as previously seen, by making urns with the crafting skill. Now that's about all I've got for you guys with mining, and a quick tip if you want to power level your mining before, that way you can mine faster, just drop the ores that you want that you're mining onto this action bar, then you can left click, one click, and it will drop the ore in your bag, making it much quicker to power mine. However, I suggest banking everything that I get just simply because uh, profit is profit, and you can never spend too much time making gold. So that's all I got for mining, guys. As always, best of luck to you making gold with the mining skill. Alright guys, the next skill in line, in order as we have been going, is smithing. Uh, fortunately, current, or excuse me, unfortunately, uh, currently with smithing there are hardly any methods that can make you money. Uh, turning bars into armor makes absolutely no profit unless you mine the bars yourself. Smelting most bars makes no profit. The only way that you can actually make a good profit here is smelting bronze bars. Uh, you're going to do it the same way that I showed you making the gold rings. You're just going to take 14 tin and 14 uh, copper ore and run over to the furnace and smelt them into bronze bars. Um, sadly, that is almost the only way that you're going to be able to make money with um, 
smithing anymore simply because iron has an 80% chance of success uh, and a, well a 50% chance if your smithing is below 45 and an 80% chance if it's above uh, you can superheat items which can make you a profit depending on what you superheat and like where you get your um, excuse me where you get your ores from but the fact that steel and mithril require coal make it to where you cannot really make profit off of buying the ores and then smelting them unfortunately uh, and there's one thing that I have not tried recently which is silver so I'm gonna go ahead and smelt a silver bar for you guys and see if silver makes profit and if not then you guys will just see how terrible it is to actually try to make money with smithing or smelting anymore so a silver ore is currently 91 gold I'm sure you could probably get it for cheaper than that but I'm not gonna worry about it I'm gonna count it as 91 gold so currently a 91 gold silver ore can be smelted into a silver bar which is valued at one hundred and thirty nine gold so that is a profit of forty forty eight gold per silver bar you can smelt twenty eight of them in a second plus five second runs so we'll, we'll just round that up to thirty five seconds for an inventory at forty eight gold or excuse me yeah forty eight gold per, per ore and uh... this is not gonna be that impressive guys but you can essentially make just about 160k gold per hour smelting that and you can make about 130 to 150k smelting the bronze bars uh, terrible terrible profit here with smithing anymore uh, if anyone knows of any ways to make actually make gold with smithing let me know but I'm pretty sure that I've gone through damn near everything with smithing trying to make money and it's just not really possible. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is you can actually sell binds. So if your smithing is really high, you can go to Dungeoneering Worlds and sell, like, Prometheum gear uh, to be bound to people in Dungeoneering. And that can usually run them, like, people have, I've seen at least, people paying around a mill to get a full bind, which will be, like, a weapon, a plate body, plate legs, and... Uh, a, a uh, shield or second weapon depending on what they use uh, nothing very impressive there with smithing but I will see you guys in the next portion of this guide which will be fishing as always best of luck to you making money with the smithing skill and I'm sorry that I couldn't find any better ways to make money smithing has just been completely nuked I don't understand what happened to the amount of profit you can use to make but uh, profits profit so I mean if you can't do any of the other things mentioned in this guide, which I highly doubt, but if you can't, you can make your 100, 150k profit there with smithing. Uh, it's really unimpressive. I'm pretty disappointed with it, because smithing used to make decent money. It was never the best, but it was always okay. But that's it. I'm not going to blab on any more about that. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next portion which will be uh, fishing. <laughs>Alright guys, next up in the skill book is fishing. Fishing is, uh, fishing is a little bit sketchy in making profit simply because um, it takes too long to catch most of the fish that you want to catch for the high amount of profit. Uh, however, you can still make a fairly good amount of profit, and it's better than smithing, that's for sure. Um, so starting from the Vedrock West Bank, you're just going to run straight uh, west and to the Barbarian Village. I'm sure everybody already knows about this fishing spot. You just lure fish. All you need is feathers. You just lure fish. Uh, catch your fishies. It does not take that long, and this is the one that... Like, you can fish these, I think it's starting at 20 fishing. If you're below 20 fishing, you're not going to make any real profit at all. Just fish your shrimps or your uh, crayfish and until you get to 20. Uh, currently, it takes me about a minute to get a full inventory of these guys. And uh, on average, trout are worth 29, salmon are worth 65. I used to get about 50-50, but recently I've been getting more about 70-30. Uh... And 
the amount of profit I usually make off one inventory is somewhere around 1300 gold. So 1300 gold in a minute equates to uh, 79k gold per hour. And uh, you bank just straight north in Edgeville. So this is really bad money, but this is not where the real money in fishing comes into play. You can make much better money in other places. This is just to make money if you are a very low level in fishing. Um, alternatively, you can make more money by cooking them. They are all worth more cooked, surprisingly. Uh, it used to be the exact opposite, but nowadays they're worth more cooked. Not a whole lot, but profit is profit. So I suggest cooking them if you're going to sell them this way. Uh, but we'll get to that in the cooking section of this guide, which I believe is next. Yes, cooking is next. Uh, that will do it for this spot, and I will cut out and talk to you guys in a minute when I reach the next spot. Alright guys, I'm back with more gold making methods through the fishing skill. Uh, we're starting off at the Ardone Lodestone. I'm sure everybody already knows about Catherby. So I'm not going to really go to Catherby and show you guys the fishing spots there. You can fish anything there. You can fish shark, swordfish, lobster, bass, whatever you want to fish. The same as you can here. I'm just going to show you here. And the bank is just as close in Cather Bay as it is here. I just prefer the fishing guild. Uh, don't ask me why, because honestly I have no fucking idea why. Uh, you're just going to go straight north from Ardone and then... Uh, a little bit to the west, and you'll see it. You can't miss it. It requires level 62 fishing to access here, I believe. Uh, there's two piers. You're going to want to go to the pier more north because it's closer to the bank. And depending on what level you are, you can fish different things. You can cage fish um, lobsters. It currently takes me about two minutes to get an inventory full of lobsters. You can harpoon fish swordfish and tuna it currently takes about a minute to a minute and a half for me to get full on this however I get more tuna than I do swordfish so I honestly don't really recommend doing that um, oh and this is one of the skills where agility comes into play because you can um, you can catch the you can catch multiples of certain fish so agility will help you out there. Makes it a little bit quicker to fill up your inventory. Uh, from net fishing spots, you really won't catch anything worth profit. But if you go harpoon where the net fishing spots are, you can catch shark. Currently takes me about three minutes to fill up an inventory with shark. Um, then I will quickly... Let me catch a shark real quick. And then I will quickly do the math to tell you guys the amount of profit you can make from each. The good thing about shark here is not a lot of people have the fishing level required to catch shark. Uh, I think it requires 76 to 78 fishing, somewhere right in there, to catch shark. So I'm barely over it. My fishing level is only 81. So it does take me quite a lot longer than most people to fill up an inventory with shark. Uh, but it does take just about three minutes. For some reason, it's being very stubborn right now. It won't give me one. Um, okay, there we go. So... If you want to quickly see how much each is worth, raw lobsters are worth 110 gold, raw swordfish are worth 215, raw tuna are worth 77, raw sharks are worth 539. So to quickly go over the amount of profit you can make there, you can make an inventory of shark in 3 minutes and they're worth 539 each. So in three minutes you can make 15k, and that equates to about 302k profit per hour. Doing lobsters, I can fill up on lobsters in just about a minute. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. We'll go ahead and say a minute. So you can get 28 lobsters in a minute, and they're each valued at 110k. So that equates to about 185k profit per hour doing lobsters. And swordfish and tuna, the problem with them is that you get more tuna than swordfish, so their their value ends up being about 148 gold per catch, and it takes about a minute and a half to fill that up. So if you can catch 28 in a minute and a half, that means you can catch um, 56 in 3 minutes, so you get 
that and then they are each worth just about 146 after it so fishing the swordfish you only make about 164k per hour so the best is the sharks of course and then followed by lobsters and then swordfish um, the great thing about the fishing guild is that the bank is right here it's closer than at Cather Bay but at Cather Bay it's by no means far away uh, and of course, as I said earlier, you can increase the amount of profit you get here simply by cooking the fish after you're done with them. That's all I've got for fishing, guys. Thank you very much for watching this portion of it, and I will uh, catch you guys in the next portion, which will be cooking. Uh, best of luck to you in making money with the fishing skill. Alright guys, the next skill in order of the skill book is cooking. Uh, cooking is actually a fairly safe way to make money, as in uh, the prices don't fluctuate a whole lot, so uh, you can spend a good amount of time cooking and then come back and know that the prices are going to be just about the same. Uh, I suggest going to Edgeville to do this, however there are a few other places that are really great, such as Catherby. Uh, I just like Edgeville, I don't know, just because I've cooked here so much that I've gotten used to it, I suppose. Uh, and I've got a little array of fish and things for me to cook here real quick, just to show you guys how much the value increases on each of them, and if there's any certain foods that you should not cook currently, because the value will decrease. So I'll just quickly uh, show you guys. We will go ahead and do a price check on each one first. Raw salmon is worth 65 coins. Yet a cooked salmon is worth... 97 coins. That is a 32 coin profit for every salmon that you cook. They cook in one second. Alright guys, sorry for the cut in the video there. My game suddenly crashed and then I went ahead and did my uh, spins on the Squeal of Fortune. Uh, unfortunately, I missed the price of raw cod before I cooked it, so I'm going to have to show you guys the other fish and we'll have to skip the cod. Uh, okay. Uh, raw tuna is worth 77 gold in its raw state. However, cooked, it is worth... 121 gold so that is a 46 fuck math that is profit mm -hmm. and a raw trout is worth 29 gold however a cooked trout is worth 50 uh, that's kind of the lowest that's only 21 gold profit however the amount of m coin that you have to invest in it is much lower Okay, a raw bass is worth 463. Bass might be worth less because it's a pretty uncommon fish. So 463 becomes 147. That's a huge loss. Do not cook bass. Mackerel will probably be the same because it's not a common food that free-to-play players actually buy. Uh, it's 18 gold raw and cooked. It's worth 52. That's actually a good profit. Go figure. Okay, raw lobsters are worth 110 gold each. However, cooked, they are valued at just about 125. That's only 15 gold profit each. However, you will get quite a bit more cooking experience, so that's a give and take. Uh, swordfish are worth 215 raw. I might burn this, so hopefully I don't. Ah, yay. They're worth 215 gold raw, and cooked, they're worth 117 or 171. So also don't cook swordfish for profit. Raw potatoes, I happen to know, are probably the best profit you will ever get. 55 gold each. However, cooked... Mm, cooked, they are worth... 163 that is tripling your profit so you can invest as much as you want and triple it depending on how much time you're willing to put in uh, 28 seconds of course for an inventory plus a qu really quick bank run will just even it out at 30 seconds you make a 107 gold profit for each potato that you cook so 107 gold and you get 28 in an inventory and you can do an inventory every 30 seconds. That is 360k gold uh, per hour. 
And I think you can probably make more money by making the uh, pot potato toppings, but I'm not familiar with which toppings actually make money or anything like that, so I won't even uh, pretend like I know and get into that. Uh, but I know that if you do toppings on your potatoes, you can potentially make quite a bit more um, profit. Uh, like baked potato with tuna and sweet corn. That might be a good one to make because I know both tuna and sweet corn are fairly cheap. Um, but yeah, that's about all there is to it as far as cooking, you know. You just cook stuff. Uh, make sure you cook the lower leveled things uh, to get your cooking up before you cook things. That way you're not burning as much. So, like, for example, if you just reached, uh, let's say, 40 cooking, don't go cook lobsters right away. Stick to cooking, like, tunas until 50 or so. That way you don't burn so many lobsters. It'll make you a lot more profit. Oh, darn. I'm not going to put my bank pin in on uh, camera. But that's about it for cooking. Another thing you can do is add pastry dough to pie dishes. However, that... Um, is really difficult to do by buying the ingredients because so many people have done that in the past that the ingredients are pretty much not on the Grand Exchange at all, ever. Uh, however, that is still potential profit. It's just up to you if you want to do it or not. And that's about it for cooking, guys. Thank you for watching this portion of the video. Best of luck to you in making the money with cooking, and I will see you in just a minute with the next skill, which is going to be fire making. Alright guys, the next skill in line is fire making, and currently I can only find one way to make money with fire making, and I'm sure you guys are probably, a lot of you out there are thinking, how in the hell can you possibly make profit with fire making? You burn a log and then it's gone, that's it. And then the other half of you are sitting there like, oh, I already know exactly what this is, it's so overrated, everybody does this. But, simply, you can only do this with willow logs because willow are the cheapest logs, which increases your profit to the maximum. You're just going to simply light them in a row, and I'll keep one for a price check. Then uh, we'll go ahead and price check a willow log. Willow logs are only 24 gold. They cost 25, however. You can't buy them for the minimum 24, at least instantly. And then, once it burns out, you just run to the front of the row again, and run down and collect your ashes. The ashes are worth... 403 gold, which is mir like miracle profit right there. That means you're making about 375 gold profit per log that you burn. Uh, you can do get your 28 ashes in approximately a minute. Uh, it'll start off a little bit slower, but you get 380 gold per ash, and you get 20 in an inventory, and you get that in a minute. You can make about 638k gold per hour with fire making. Uh, the profit can be exponentially increased if you go to a world where someone is already making fires and you just run behind them and pick up their ashes. Not only because you don't have to pay for the logs, but also you don't have to take time to light the fires. But another thing about it is you really don't lose a lot of time making the fires yourself because... You'll be making fires, then you'll start a second row, then by the time you're done with the second row, your first row will probably be burning out, then you can collect it, then go light another row, then your other row will be burnt out. And it gets, like, there's a really great flow that you can get going to it to make it much more uh, simple for you. Uh, of course, that's probably the only way that you can really make money with fire making, and it's, uh, it's pretty stable. I'm actually pretty happy with, you know, just... Lighten willow logs and picking up the ashes. Uh, pretty fun for me, at least. It's really calming. I can watch a movie while I do it or whatever. And that's about it as far as making gold with fire making. Uh, it was already kind of a long shot skill to make gold with, so hopefully that helped a lot of you guys make money. And that's something that you can do at a really low level. It only requires 30 fire making to do that. And you can do it at level 3, honestly. You can just follow somebody around and pick up their ashes and make 650k per hour. So, uh,. That's pretty great. That's one of the better me money-making methods in the game at the moment. So, pretty impressive. And uh, best of luck to you guys at making money with your fire-making skill. And I'll see you in the next portion of this guy, which is going to be woodcutting. Okay. 
What's up guys? I'm here with the next portion of this video in the RuneScape Gold Making with All Skills guide. Uh, the next skill in line in our skill book is woodcutting. So I'm here in Draenor Village, which is classically known as one of the best places for woodcutting experience, but not a lot of people come here to farm gold. But what I'm here to show you is right on the other side of the bank that, like over there is willows in the water. Right over here there's one oak tree that <clears throat> and it respawns really quickly so you if it knocks down you just wait a few minutes well more like a few seconds it respawns really quickly alternatively you can run to that oak tree but usually it's not worth it and you just wait here then you chop this bad boy down and uh, depending on your room crafting level and what kind of pick you have you can chop this down really quickly oh did I say room crafting uh, I meant wood cutting Depending on your woodcutting level and what kind of pick you have, you can chop this bad boy down really quickly and then just come right in here and use the deposit box and deposit your oak logs. Currently, at this point in the game, which is uh, January 12th, 2013, an oak log is worth 77 gold. Uh, that's probably the lowest I've seen in the last five days, so I'm sure it's bound to go up. Uh, however, there are a lot more uh, stable and stronger ways to make money with woodcutting. I just wanted to show you guys that that is a way to do it at a fairly low level. Uh, next, what we're going to do is use a games necklace, I think. No, that's not the right way. Okay, you're going to want to get a dueling ring, or ring of dueling. And you are going to want to tally to uh, mobilizing armies, command center. And you'll pop up right here. And in this area are just uh, west of the mobilizing armies are uh, two kinds of trees here. You've got achy trees which can be chopped down at one wood cutting I think. Uh, hold on. We'll check. Yes, if you're a member you can chop achy trees at one wood cutting with absolutely no prerequisite. Uh, and here there are also eucalyptus trees which you can chop at 58 wood cutting. So achy trees will give you one log. The only difference though is by chopping achy trees here instead of chopping normal trees the achy logs are worth 241 gold. Then there's these eucalyptus trees here. I'll quickly chop down one of these. These take a little bit longer, uh, but vary depending on your uh, woodcutting level. Uh, they are easier to chop down than use, and there's a lot less people here, and they're really close to a bank. So I highly prefer this. Uh, however, it can be a little tedious if you do not have a dragon hatchet. Uh, I personally really need to go invest in one. I've got the money for it. I just, I actually don't know why I haven't bought one yet. Um, I should. I probably will. But eucalyptus logs... There's no competition here, ever. And they're valued at 388 gold. And to bank, you just want to run straight back to the mobilizing armies, and there's a bank right inside the the uh, gates here. There's a bank right here. This little guy. And then you just, you know, deposit all your shit, and then head back out and continue chopping. Uh... I highly, highly recommend chopping those eucalyptus logs. Uh, it's really great cash. And I really recommend, if you are a member, chopping the achy trees here rather than chop normal trees, especially if you're leveling woodcutting. That is so much more profit while leveling woodcutting, and it's really close to a bank. Uh, these achy trees respawn at the same rate normal trees do, I believe. Hold on, we'll check real quick. They chop down just as fast, that's for sure. And we'll go ahead and get a respawn timer on them. Fifteen second respawn. So that's nothing. So, uh, yeah. Right here outside the mobilizing armies. And, uh, of course, there's other ways to make money with woodcutting, but I just want to show you guys a couple of off-the-wall methods that I know a lot of people don't really use. Uh, then, of course, there's chopping yew trees. There's really no professional 
place to chop down yew trees. I mean, it's all going to be just about the same uh, experience. Um, alternatively, you can uh, go to your Catherby Lodestone. I don't know why my Catherby Lodestone's not unlocked in this guy. I know I've unlocked it. But uh, you can go to Catherby Lodestone and go just east towards Camelot, and there's a ton of maple trees there. Maple trees provide decent amount of gold, but not as much as this does. Uh, there's also the magic tree logs south of Sears Village. Um, there's also, I mean, woodcutting is just a great way to get money. Um, oh, and if you've completed jungle potion, you can chop mahogany logs, um, right off of Brimhaven, I believe. Yeah, it should be right off Brimhaven. Most people already know where it is. You need trading sticks to get in and out of there, and also trading sticks to use the bank that's there. But you can make a ton of profit. Uh, chopping eucalyptic logs here will net you just about 600k per hour at the lowest woodcutting levels, but if you're 70 plus and have a dragon hatchet, you can probably almost double that because you'll be chopping these down so much faster. Achy trees, on the other hand, will net you just about 400k gold per hour and can be done at the exact same rate as normal trees. This meaning that you can start making your gold with the achy tree logs at literally level one woodcutting. You could create an account and uh, use a one of the miscellaneous methods later on in this guide. Buy yourself a hatchet and a ring of dueling. Head straight to mobilizing armies and start chopping these things down right away. Uh, right, right here is probably not the best spot to chop them I mean, there is three right here, sort of in a triangle, so you can click on them and run to them, but they're a little bit spread out. I'm not a huge fan of that. If you go just a little bit more north, there are there's a spot with four achy trees that are really close to each other, so that might be better for you. But here is where I'm showing you guys, just because it's closest to the bank. But uh, that's going to be about it for woodcutting. That's all I have there for woodcutting, guys. Uh, of course, there's other methods like I've already stated, but I'm not going to go ahead and show you guys those methods because I'm sure you guys have already seen those methods in a million different videos. But these are the most off-the-wall yet stable ways i found of making money using woodcutting. A great thing about these methods that I'm showing you is that Aki and Eucalyptus uh, can be used for specific fletching, I believe. Hmm, possibly not. There we go, the unstrung comp eh, composite bow. Uh, that can actually be used to make money as well, but uh, I don't recommend it. It's a little bit sketchy. Um, but the thing is, people do buy them, especially the achy logs. The eucalyptus are a little bit different, but you still need eucalyptus for a certain quest, I believe. And you need the achy logs for a quest as well. So they sell. They will sell really quickly. Um, that's it for woodcutting, guys. Uh, best of luck to you in making money using the woodcutting skill, and I will see you in just a few with the next skill in line. Alright, guys, these are just some miscellaneous methods of making gold that did not fit really into any of the other skills because they either had no skill requirements or uh, they didn't, they just didn't make sense to bulk them in with the other skills. Um,. So I'll quickly show you guys these different methods, and I will give you, at the end, I will give you uh, I will give you a quick uh, hourly profit rate at the very end. So the first one is in Berthorpe, and I have no fucking idea why, but every time I come to Berth Berthorpe, I lag. Regardless of what's going on, I just lag in birth warp. Who knows why? Who cares why, honestly? It's fine, though. I'm just going to run straight up to where I showed you our farming patch was. And the first uh, quick thing here is picking flax. Uh, this is pretty overlooked because this was like the main way that bots made their money when... Uh, but like bots really got big like everybody was botting 
this is pretty much what they did. They picked flax. But it's looked over by a lot of people. But really, it's one of the best money-making methods if you are low skill levels. And, I mean, you get an inventory pretty quickly. And flax is worth 36 gold each at the moment. You get an inventory in about 30 seconds, if that, and you can bank it in within that 30 second time frame. Uh, so if they're worth 36 gold each, and you get 28 in 30 seconds, in a minute you get... two K. So in an hour you can make about hundred and twenty one K gold. So hundred and twenty one K gold an hour for doing absolutely no skills is pretty damn good. That's impressive by my standards. And that's all there is to that. You just pick the flax, then run back up here to the bank and bank it. That's it. Run back down, pick the flax, blah blah, rinse and repeat. That's all you gotta do. Um you can also do this in uh, Sears Village. Sears Village, I believe. There's a uh, flax plot just south of a bank. That's also a very good place to do it. And then you just run in here and bank it. Alright guys, I'll see you in just a couple of minutes with the next money making method. Alright guys, the next money making method is another one I'm sure that most people already know about, but this is spinning flax into bowstrings. Uh, it's a great profit as it is, and you're going to start in Lumberage bank, bank, and then just head down one flight of stairs and spin on the spinning wheel right here. Um, it's great profit as it is, but of course the profit can be maximized by um, collecting your own flax instead of buying flax off the Grand Exchange. But if you prefer to buy the flax off the Grand Exchange, you will still make yourself a great chunk of profit. So we'll stop and I'll go ahead and show you. One flax is worth 31 versus a bowstring which is worth 132. So you make 101 gold per profit and it takes a second and a half to spin each one and it takes about two seconds to do a bank run. Well, maybe more like five seconds to do a bank run because you actually do have to go up the stairs and sometimes that screws up. But, after the math, hold on, that equates to just about 400k profit per hour. And it's pretty simple, pretty afk able and I think it only requires 10 crafting. We will check real quick. Ah, it requires 1 crafting, so you can do that at level 1 as well. Even more money per hour, you can just go pick that flax, then come here and... Uh, spin it into bowstrings. That's nice. Yep, so you can just go ahead and do that. And I will be right back with the next miscellaneous money-making method. Alright guys, the next money-making method is just killing chickens. And I know a lot of people are going to probably QQ about me putting a couple of these different methods in here. But there are a lot of people out there that don't really know good money-making methods, and this is mainly for those kind of people. The new players who uh, haven't really played the game very long, that's what this is for. And this skill portion of the guide was more for the people who are intermediate players, up to advanced players, sort of, but not. My, this was mainly geared towards beginner to intermediate players. Uh, and then you just come right up here from Lumbridge, whack at your chickens, and you take the feathers. And that'll do you just fine. You might want to close this so that chickens don't get out while you're in here. And that'll do it for that. That's nothing special right there. Um, ah. Alright guys, I will be right back with the next portion of the miscellaneous gold method. Alright guys, this next method is making logs into planks. You can use regular planks, oak planks, mahogany planks, or T 
teak planks, I believe. And uh, any type of log will make you money when turned into planks. So you just buy whatever you can afford and then run and do the planking. So you're going to go from the Varrock Lodestone north into the center of the town where the fountain is. Then you're going to go straight to the east and you're going to wind up at Virak East Bank. Right here is where you're going to bank from. I will quickly deposit these bank noted logs, then withdraw them as normal items. So then you're just going to continue your run east. You'll want to wear weight reducing gear if you have any, so that your agility uh, will help your run last as long as possible, and you can get uh, more profit per hour. And then you're going to run out of here, and you're going to run north on this path. There is a uh, conveniently placed musician right here. So if you need to rest up quickly and get your run up fast, that's the spot to do it. Uh, there's also a yew tree right here. So if you're woodcutting for uh, money like I showed you guys earlier, right there is a yew tree that's fairly close to a bank. Uh, here's the lumber mill. You're going to go ahead and buy plank sawmill operator. And you're going to do your oak. And there you go. And it costs you 250 gold to turn an oak log into a plank. And then an oak log costs 77 gold. So you're making just roughly a 220 gold profit per plank. And each run of 28 logs takes roughly a minute and a half. That equates to, if you'll give me just a minute, that equates to at 270 gold per log and you get 20 in an inventory and two inventories is your three minutes and there you go that is just about 302k gold profit per hour and that is simple as all hell the only problem with that is it requires a, a little bit of startup cash because at one oops I did not mean to attack him but whatever I'll kill him because for one inventory to be turned into planks, it's going to cost you 7k. So you can see that your cash pile is going to be shrinking a little bit um, whilst doing this. And uh, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You just got to have the gold. Alright guys, there's one last portion I want to... or actually two... There's two more pieces I want to tack on to this miscellaneous guide, so I'll see you with the next piece in just a minute. Alright guys, I'm here with the next portion of the miscellaneous gold methods. And uh, this one also requires a little bit of startup cash, but not a whole lot. And this is going to be going to the fishing shops around the entire game here. And buying out all their feathers and fishing bait. Um, I'm not sure if fishing bait still profit. I'll check it. I know feathers are. Uh, you want to buy all their feathers for 6k, alright? So you, you just bought 1,000 feathers for 6k. And they're valued at 18k. So you're tripling your money. And that's pretty great. Uh, fishing bait costs 3 gold and it sells for 6 gold so that's doubling your money so definitely buy all the fishing bait as well and these will slowly restock themselves so you can do this I would say they probably are completely restocked every 2 hours and you can do this at all the fishing stores there's this one, there's one in Brimhaven there's one north of Draenor in the mansion there's a guy there that sells feathers there's one in Catherby, but Catherby guy only sells bait. He doesn't sell feathers. And there's one in the Fishing Guild. Um, I also think I'm forgetting about one, but I can't think of where it would be. Hmm, maybe that's it. But you're just going to buy out all the feathers, buy out all the fishing bait, take them to the Grand Exchange, and sell them for a profit. You're going to triple your money on the feathers, double your money on the fishing bait. You can do it about every two hours. And a, another quick thing I'm going to show you as part of this is another... Um, place that you can do almost the exact same thing. You just are buying something different. You're not buying uh, the fishing feathers and bait. So you're going to go to Birthorp again. 
you're probably noticing that we're spending a lot of time in Berthorp for our gold making. That's because Berthorp is pretty well centered. It's uh, made for low levels mainly. It's supposed to be like when you just become a member, you come here. And there is a... Oh, I thought that was a mystic. I was like, wow. No, never mind. Uh, I'm going to just withdraw some money. And we are going to go south. Of Berthorp here. Um, if you want to do this faster, you could just do the Taverly Lodestone. Um, I don't know why I didn't do that. That was kind of dumb. But whatever. Use the Taverly Lodestone. We're going to walk right past it. It's not going to save you a whole lot of time, but time is money, so you do want to save as much time as possible. Uh, you're just going to walk right past here. And then you're going to follow this path. It's going to curve to the east side here. And uh, almost there. Right here, the Slayer Master, you're going to trade to Riel. And he sells, um, see if he, ah, right here. Unfinished broad bolts and broad arrowheads. We'll quickly buy them. They are 50 gold each. Yet they sell for 75 and 56. So the bolts are definitely worth it. You may want to skip the arrows if you're just too lazy, but, I mean, like, profit's profit, so... I suggest just doing all of it. And then I will quickly take us to the Grand Exchange and we will sell it all and I'll show you what we end up with. And then I'll have one last quick portion of this guide for the uh, low levels, like the miscellaneous ways to gather gold at the very end here. I'm just going to quickly go to the Grand Exchange and I'll show you guys how much all this crap sells for. All these uh, feathers, fishing bait, broad bolts, and broad arrowheads. The broad bolts and broad arrowheads, I think, take an entire week to completely restock. So those you can't be doing every few hours like you can with the feathers, but they also make a lot more gold. So it's understandable that that would take longer. We're just going to go right here to the Grand Exchange Clerk. I'm just going to collect some of this stuff. And we will go ahead and start selling these. I'm just going to drop them minus 5% one time on all of them. And we will see what sells and what does not sell and how quickly they do sell and the feathers as well. So they're not going to sell immediately, but that did not take very long. And we'll just keep waiting. I'll go ahead and put these planks up. The planks should sell instantly. Yeah, people always need planks. And they sell for more than what I set them there for. I picked up some grapes from the guards. And so there you go. The arrowheads are currently not selling. The thing about the arrowheads, the best time to sell those is during double XP weekend. But uh, alternatively, if you're trying to power your fletching, broad arrowheads are amazing fletching experience. Just an FYI right there. Uh, I'm not sure what what a uh, fletching level they require. Broad leaf arrows? That's not them, is it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yep, broad leaf. They give a lot, but you have to do the smoking kills quest first. Uh, that's what most people use them for. And that's about it, guys. Uh, I can almost guarantee that these other uh, broad arrowheads and feathers will sell in less than an hour so I'm just gonna sit on it if they're not selling you might want to just like put them up at night and then go to sleep and then you know when you wake up in the morning I'm I guarantee they'll be sold because they are stuff that people actually need 
Uh, it might just be a bad time of the day for me to be selling these, but whatever. I'm sure they'll sell within an hour or so. And uh, I'll be right back with you guys for the last little bit of this miscellaneous uh, gold methods. Alright guys, this is the last method I have to add to the miscellaneous money-making methods in RuneScape here. Uh, you're going to get fresh off the drain or lodestone and head just east past the uh, wheat patch here. Hmm? Why is my guy talking? I don't really know what that was. That was weird. Huh. And you're just going to keep heading east, and right here, you're going to run in this little patch here and pick these potatoes. These can be used great in conjunction with the cooking guide that I have in this video. Uh, as you know, cooking potatoes was making us triple our money in profit and you pretty much stop burning potatoes on a range at a f pretty damn low level um, and right here it's really really simple if you focus on it and just pick your potatoes really quickly pick them in rows and stuff you can get an inventory in 30 seconds pretty simple the key to is just getting the pace right sometimes people click too fast uh, you also get potato seeds I recommend just dropping the potato seeds um, because you can just buy potato seeds for one gold uh, and it's so simple it's great for a noob money-making method 55 gold each for a potato you get 28 in one inventory An inventory takes 30 seconds, meaning this makes you just about 186k gold in an hour. And it requires no skills, no combat, no gear. 186k in an hour. And that's just the potatoes. The fact that you can then triple that by cooking is just ridiculous. So, um... Yeah, because like the baked potatoes were, what, 157 gold each? So, 157 gold for picking a potato and then putting it on the range is really damn good. And that's all I got for you guys as far as the miscellaneous gold methods go. Uh, hopefully this uh, guide has been able to help you, no matter what skill level you are in this game, to make a lot of gold and make a lot of gold fast. Um, I've showed you as many methods as I can think of, and I've showed you a method for every single skill in the game, aside from summoning and farming. I know I wasn't very helpful on either of those. And then agility, of course, there's not really any ways to make money with agility. Other than that, I'm pretty sure I've showed you guys at least one method for every single skill, and hopefully I was able to help you guys in getting, um, you know, all the gold that you need in the game. And uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to leave it in a comment or send me a message on YouTube. I'd love to help you guys. Um, yeah, that's all That's all for the miscellaneous um, gold methods, guys. If anyone knows of another method they'd like me to add into an update video, uh, let me know and I will... Okay. Let me know and I will give you a shout-out in the description. I will be updating these or this gold guide periodically by adding in uh, just other videos and I will say like you know update to the old video or something like that and uh, that's probably how I'll do that and that's that's pretty much all she wrote that's all I've got for you guys as far as the miscellaneous methods best of luck to you guys making money using all of these miscellaneous methods What's up guys, it's Ice here. Just wanted to give you guys all a quick thank you for watching my video and a quick reminder to always rate, comment, subscribe, and let me know what kind of content you guys want to see in the future and what you thought of this content. I'll do my best to update this guide with more gold making methods on my channel as often as I can and whenever I find something that I think is a really good idea to show you guys. Um, other than that, just a quick thank you again for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And any sort of feedback is greatly appreciated, guys. Take care.